Get ready for hot takes and insight from local industry experts in real estate, business, and lifestyle. He used to play ball with the Padres. He played hockey for the Lobos. Now they're crushing it in the real estate game. Together, they'll showcase the best of the Duke City. This is All About You, ABQ. Ah, we're on. Ah, <laughs> season five rolling along. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. It's all about you, ABQ. The goal of the show is to highlight the best of our city's industry experts in real estate, culture, lifestyle, so that you walk away with some value of feeling inspired. Now, the way we like to do that is to answer the questions you may have or interview the guests you want to see. So we invite you to join the conversation. You can reach out on our social media up here or join our email list to get some timely tips about our community and real estate market. Hey, I'm Skip Adams, owner of Sold by Skip Real Estate Brokerage here in Albuquerque. Grant Harvey, home loan expert. You probably recognize Grant as the head coach of the University of New Mexico men's Lobo hockey team, but now he's absolutely crushing it in the mortgage space. If you flip the dial a little bit and go to HGTVs, you may see Skip on TV's House Hunters. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I hear no, 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 you're doing good. Drugs? You're doing good. <laughs> and he's part of the top 2% producing real estate agents in the city. Here's why you're going to want to stay tuned. We're joined in studio by Connor Marshall. He's the president of the Rio Grande chapter of the Appraisal Institute. We're going to talk, look, it's a real estate based show. So we're going to talk about commercial real estate and appraisers uh, because I think it's significant, especially in our market, to understand kind of how values work and, and see what goes on behind the scenes. It's about time we got technical. Well, we did some entertainment, but we, we need to pay homage to our profession and really get to the nitty gritty of what's going on. Yeah, it'll be a very educational episode. And then obviously stay to the end of the show. I don't even have to tell you, but I'll tell you it's everybody's favorite. Oh, yeah. Skip's tips. <laughs> Uh, Grant, dude, it is that time of the year. It is fall. Yeah. Officially, it's uh, it girls are wearing their little UGG moon boots and yeah, yeah. It's already happening. Gray sweatpants season, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta let them know. Gotta rake some leaves. Yeah. No, but to speak to it, so one of the, my favorite times of year is as we get into fall when the leaves change. But uh, the pumpkin patch. So I always I blew this up last year, but McCall's pumpkin patch out in like Moriarty. I don't know if you've ever been there. I don't know why you would if you don't have kids. We but buy illegal fireworks. We set the town on fire. That's where you go to Moriarty. So yeah, check this place out. It's a massive um, ranch that they have out there, a cattle ranch, uh, but they convert it into the pumpkin patch. But not just a pumpkin patch. They have events for kids. Um, they even let you drown kids in what? Yeah, exactly. It's a it's a pretty wild time. And it, here's what I love about it is it, the, when you get there, they open at like 10 a.m. and the line is just out the ass, but they have everything constructed so that it's such a big event. It's so spread out that you, there's no lines for anything. You just walk right in. And the cool thing is they don't, tr they don't nickel and dime you for you know, tickets to buy you know, cotton candy. Or, you, know, you just kind of pay one price, you go in and essentially everything's free. And you know, we jump on the train, they have a train that goes around. So the kids were loving it and they have this really cool thing. Mark, key this picture up. They have a princess. Oh, here's all, all the kids um, in the big rocking chair. And then they have uh, the princess castle. So they have all these you know, princesses dressed up so the girls what can go meet. What the world? Princess. It's wild. They, they have so many different events there. Zip lines right, cool. and slides and castles and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, again, no lines. It's great. So it's, it's not one of those things where like you're at Disneyland waiting in line for 30 minutes on yeah. everything. And, they have, you know. oh, okay, so this is a, they, they built quite the compound here. Um, it's a huge compound. I mean, you could get lost in this place. I, I did do the, the zombie like paintball thing one time. Oh, really? Right. Yeah, and I just used all my paintballs on one guy. <laughs> I shot, I, didn't, I thought we had enough paintballs, so I shot 30 paintballs to this one guy, and I was like, there's four left. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Four of them are for me. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, so there's, we actually are, are surrounded by a lot of cool, um, I guess, farming type of, um, I guess, events or, or uh, uh, put-ons that, that um, the, the Wagner family has one in Corrales, mm -hmm. um, in which case uh, you're able to pick your pumpkin and pick your chili. Pick your pumpkin, you can make ristas, you do a flower. I think this time of year they have, what, flower picking, stuff like that. So anyways, I don't know. That's, that's cool interactive thing, right? I think we have this um, pilgrimage to go back to farming and, and look at farming. And it, it wasn't that long ago that most of our ancestors farmed. And now we, we went step back and we go, I don't know, farming looks pretty cool. Maybe. I don't know, I like a lot of antibiotics and steroids in my stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. so. <laughs> I would rather read an alpaca to work is what I prefer to do. But uh, let's cue up my pictures now. Um, so I did a little, you're not the only one that does stuff, Skip. <laughs> I went to, I, I think it's Snake Farm in, uh, I want to get it right, Snake Farm in, in Los Lunas. Um, I 
we didn't pick our chili. Um, oh, those are, the, stop right there. That's the ones that I've grown in my backyard. So it takes about um, 800 weeks to get six. Um, but I've been putting those in my toaster oven and that's a good like kind of a daily thing. I'm able to pick enough to have like four or five chilies and, and I roast them and it makes my house Wait, so that's the poor, the poor man's roasting method is your toaster oven downstairs. I don't I think know that's, why you said poor man. Well, I'm just saying, because you don't have the whole industrial setup. I don't, okay. Well then, yes, I'm the, the poor man. I didn't have a chili roaster in my living room. <laughs> According to Skip, it makes it legit. It's Snake Ranch Farm Stores on Main Street. Um, you know, Main Street, which is famous. Oh, there's, there's me on the left, okay, just to make sure. And then there's uh, my brother-in-law, Nate, who- Nasty uh, Nate in the house. Nate, he, 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 when, the guy, the, when the guy wants to work, he, 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 I don't even think he's listening to me, which is probably what everyone does after a while, but he was just down to business. But we, we peeled chili. So probably, let me understand this. So you guys went to a, a farm and were able to pick and roast your own chilies? Well, you, I don't know if you could pick them there. We oh. just were like doing the, you know, cut out the middle, man. We just had them roast it. Um, they had the uh, four variations. I've been growing that yellow variation, the, the burn your face off. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll have some on here. Yeah. We'll go do it again. Um, but it was, it was pretty cool. We got a whole bag of chili and, and peeled it there. And I took my four or five bags, rubbed my eyes and- uh, Hit the junk on the way out. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, That's the best time of year is chili roasting season, pumpkin patches, um, you know, fall is in the air. I love, I love this time of year. I love it when it gets cold. Man, I'm so tired of paying 562 bucks for my refrigerated air. Jeez, yeah. swamp cooler, man. You know, I was, I was, against swamp cooler because our new house has one. So this is our first year with a swamp cooler. Um, and to be honest with you, it wasn't that bad. I mean, I don't run hot as hot as you do, yeah. but it was, you know, it was very manageable. It was, um, and then our utility bill was like 150 bucks I'm a sure month. I'm sure it was. My, my problem with me being an allergy sufferer is the particulates that go through the air, right? So everything goes through the filters and then they get calcified mm -hmm. with the seven minutes. Uh, but they, they're sending particulates out there. And for me, I'm, I'm sensitive. A refrigerator does a good job of actually um, filtering out the air and recirculating. But at, at, to the tune of 562 <laughs> bucks. So that was... That's out the fun. door. I have my, my windows suck too. I mean, I do have 27 windows in there. Um, so I, I don't know why they build it like that. It takes home shout out for wasting my money. Um, but yeah, there's, I have, if I'm going to do a window job, what do you think? A window job is $20,000. Oh yeah. Right? Forget it. You'll never get that money so, back. So it's like, I'll just pay the 562 and subsidize my poor. One of the favorite things, and this is basically what put Albuquerque on the map as we circle into balloon fiesta season. Uh, balloon Fiesta kicks off this week, and uh, of course, people from all over the world will come to check out the Balloon Fiesta. And Balloon Fiesta has been here, it's a staple, it's been here forever. In fact, we, I was able to go through the archives and I found a picture of the original Balloon Fiesta in Albuquerque. And Holy there it is. Smoke. There it is. Yeah, um, uh, Ron Bell. Yeah, Sponsored by Ron Bell. Yeah. One of uh, Ever since the early 30s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been a fixture of this community. The old horse and wagon. Um, but yeah, so that's, you kick it back to the Balloon Fiesta. But w w the reason we have Balloon Fiesta here is the perfect weather, the box effect. People from out of town don't understand the box effect. It's a weather pattern that allows, uh, at certain elevations, the wind will blow that way and drop down and blow you back to the Balloon Fiesta Park. So perfect box. We have an international reach. People from all over the world come. And then it was obviously named the most photographed event in the world. Balloon it's Fiesta. pretty neat. I, 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 as a kid, you go, ah, oh, Balloon Fiesta. And as an adult, you go, oh, this is pretty neat. So you, I'm, I'm just now at 44 getting back to the adult stuff, and I just quit now going to uh, the, the techno clubs uh, <laughs> just about a month ago. Just raving. I hung it up. <laughs> but I, I went in a balloon. I have a fear of heights. I decided, that's it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cure it. I'm going to get past my, my fear. And it was like, oh, God, do something. We're up there, and I'm like, was kind of like unmoved and I'm sure you could do different tours but I want this one that pretty went straight up and down and then next to this annoying woman that I wish fell out of the gondola. <laughs> I would be terrified because here's the thing there's really once you get up there you realize you're just at the mercy of the wind it's not like there's a motor or safety to protect you I mean I would just punch the balloon down yeah but, punch yeah. it to safety yeah <laughs> um yeah so uh, that the balloon fiesta is one of my you know that's it's a cool reoccurring thing now Good thing we have the traffic going on on I-25 to accommodate the balloon fiesta. That's going to be real fun. Yeah. Just what a traffic jam, just walk out of your car and just go to a thing. Just light your car on fire. Maybe it'll take off. Um, other than that, man, what's got, you, what's got you bugged this week? Oh, funny you should ask. Let's hit a <laughs> rant rant. Uh, you ever ask yourself, there's not enough time in the day. Like, how does everyone do it? If I last checked, 
24 hours in the day, right? Beep, boop, 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 boop. Yeah, it checks out. So here's what we're working with within a day. And obviously you guys know some of these has to go. So what's one gonna go? Brush your teeth for five minutes. Start the day, you're already behind. Okay, you gotta meditate, they say for 30 minutes before you start today. You may gotta make a healthy breakfast. Maybe your eggs, maybe the, all the leafy greens. Maybe you need to have uh, someone from Kiva Juice be your roommate to help this out because it's going to take too long. If you make your coffee, more time out the door. Um, take your vitamins. Read your Bible. Talk to your partner about 50 to 15 minutes, your significant other, about well, I don't know, Taylor Swift or whatever you're going to talk about. Um, take your dog for a walk. Get shower. Read your emails. Read your text. Answer your voicemails. Shave. Groom. Where, where are we at? Like 10, 15 by now? Um, then, you have your, then you have to learn to slow your roll. And what I mean by that is I like to get my uh, morning uh, speeding ticket. Going about 92 down to Suna. And I go, since when did they change the speed limits here? You know, kind of throw the cop off their rocker. Usually still issues in one. Yeah, by that time you get to work at 11.30. Uh, you got a 20-minute commute there. 30-minute meeting to start things off. All right, we're already running behind. Anyways, everyone have a sit down. Let's have a sit down talk. Okay, now eat lunch, go home, talk to your significant other about, I guess, Janet Jackson this time. Wind down, eat dinner, go to the gym for an hour, stretch. Remember, you need to stretch. They need you to stretch every day. Okay, here we go. We're going to stretch now. Read a book, take your dog for a walk, skincare six minutes, floss for five minutes. And if you're skip, use the rest of your 13 minutes to raise your kids. One of these has to go, many of these has to go. Don't pick, your, don't pick your kids, Skip, but that's, there's not enough time. And also, what's up with rice cooker? Can't they take, can, they should take a shorter amount of time. That's a grand rant. <laughs> <laughs> why, did it, why did it take, we have all this technology, why does it take 45 minutes for your rice to get done? I don't know. I, it's just one of those things, buddy. Is that why, is that why you eat out all the time? <laughs> Who's got that kind of time, right? Who's Remember got... to press the, the rice cooker switch down. Remember to go get the rice. I don't have that rice cooker money. And I don't uh, even talk about weekend stuff. <laughs> like weekends, you know, like, oh, gosh, how do you do it all? You just, you pretty much have to have, um, you have to live in a castle with servants. <laughs> Here's why you're going to want to stay tuned. We're joined in studio by Connor Marshall, the president of the Rio Grande chapter of the Appraisal Institute, uh, the appraisal guy over at Collier. So either way, uh, stay tuned at the end of the show. It's everybody's we, favorite. We got, Skip's tips. We got time for that. You do. Uh, this is all about you, ABQ. Hey, welcome back to you, ABQ. I'm Skip Adams, owner of Sold by Skip Real Estate Brokerage here in Albuquerque. Grant Harvey, home loan expert. We want to welcome to the show Connor Marshall, the president of the Rio Grande chapter of the Appraisal Institute, a commercial appraiser, to drop some knowledge on us. Connor, dude, thanks for showing up today, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Dude, I'm you're sorry. dressed sharp, man. I feel like I'm so underdressed looking at you. Is, <laughs> but I think that's the difference between, you know, the commercial real estate world and the residential world is that, you know, we kind of roll out of bed at 11, but you guys are on a, more of a, a strict schedule. <laughs> well, plus he doesn't know that Mark does not turn on the AC in the studio, too. So now he's finding out the hard way. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. <laughs> Uh, but Connor, you got a cool story. In fact, that you're born and raised in Albuquerque, El Dorado, Northeast Heights guy. I, can, I, I applaud you for that. At least you're not a West Sider. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, uh, born and raised here. My roots actually run deep. My great, great, great grandfather, I don't know how many greats it goes back, was the first territorial governor of New Mexico. There's so. no way that's true. Is that cool? And that's here awesome. he is on the clip. No, he was in the balloon fiesta picture that yeah. Skip had up. <laughs> Wait, he, knew, Mark, he knew Ron Bell probably. Mark, right? can you pull up the balloon fiesta picture one more time? I just want to get some, some clarification. I, this took me forever to archive this picture. Dude, sponsored by Ron Bell, though? Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, I've seen he's been prominent for forever. <laughs> Guy's just crushing it. You know, and we're just leading up to the fact that we, we were able to book a special guest this month coming in, Ron Bell. So I wanted to throw that out there. Anyways, all right, fuck you guys. Let's move on. Um, but so, okay, so born and raised Albuquerque, you have New Mexico roots, which, which is great. I mean, obviously the show's all about Albuquerque and kind of showing some of the cool things. But um, talk a little bit about your education because you, you had a chance to leave New Mexico. I did, yeah. So I, I got my degree in accounting from UNM. Uh, I had the opportunity to go to... School Anderson! That's right. Everyone's a lobo. Woof. <laughs> got to go... Had the opportunity to go work for uh, Disney in Florida for a little bit. And so I was out there for about a six-month period, 
working for them. And wait, wait, so when you were working for Disney, you weren't dressed as goofy. You were doing no, like no, behind the scenes. He's like, Mickey Mouse, you're spending way too much money. Yeah. We're way over budget, and you too, Minnie. You're a gold digger. Give me those high heels. I was not a character. I was a lifeguard. Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I could see maybe a lifeguard at the New Mexico State Fair, but what do you need a lifeguard for at Disney? <laughs> so Disney has uh, some water parks that they own in Florida. Oh, man. Blizzard that's Beach and Typhoon Lagoon. So. Well, it's got to be tough to leave, you know, sunny Florida. What, how the hell did you end up back in New Mexico? Well, uh, it was nostalgic for uh, the views that we have here. That was one thing that really stood out to me. Everything is flat. I really craved to like get somewhere up high so I could see. You couldn't see anywhere. I felt <laughs> claustrophobic in the trees. And uh, and the other thing really that was the smell of green chili. I was like, I miss I miss isn't that, that smell that of nuts? green chili. <laughs> isn't that is it? To, 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 I had thought about this the other day. Isn't it weird that the smell of a vegetable? They go, okay, so you're in Mexico. Maybe some crimes up. But what what makes it all worth it? There's this vegetable that grows, <laughs> and we roast it, and it makes it you all gotta worth it. Get a toaster. Dad got oven. shot. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Got green chili. Yeah. Rubbed it all over my junk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that, and I mean, and plus I have a lot of family here, so lots of roots and um, just kind of was nostalgic for that as well. So talk a little bit more about, you know, your background because, you know, appraisals, you know, how do you, how do you get started in appraisals? For me, here's, here's my thing. Here's the toughest part of my job is, um, you know, when a home seller comes to me and goes, you know, what's my house worth? And I go, God damn it. So then I got to sit through and go through spreadsheets, uh, subtract here, add here, come up with a value. And I always just go, man, I wish I had like a, an in-house appraiser. I could just pass the, the smart people stuff off to so you could come up with value. And then plus all you can do is your best, right? I mean, they, these guys get down to the nitty gritty and you, your best is like, ah, I hope it's this, right? It's yeah. still kind of an estimate at the end of the day. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's a good question because it's not something that people usually think of as a profession to even consider. Uh, my degree was in accounting and never even, I didn't even know what an appraisal was. And I was looking for a job after school and I knew an acquaintance who was hiring. They were, he was an appraiser and they were hiring. And so I read through the appraisal and sure enough, it, it kind of met the uh, detailed aspect of looking at numbers and gave kind of the behind the scenes look at real estate and I was like oh this is this is great I'm gonna I'm gonna pursue this but but you're right it's not something that's widely out <laughs> was there. it a residential or commercial right off the bat it was commercial right okay. off the bat yeah I kind of lucked out there talk about some of the differences between a residential and commercial appraisal because we always have, you know here's our thing from the residential side it's the appraiser is almost like uh, like an umpire in baseball. Like nobody's ever happy with the appraiser. It's always the appraiser's fault that so, you know the transaction. Yeah, I want crazy. a roundhouse like nine out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> but so, what are some of the difference nuances between coming up with a value for residential and commercial? Well, fundamentally, it's the same process. Um, an appraiser is trained to kind of look at the nitty gritty, like you're talking about. In there's three approaches to value, looking at sale comps, looking at what, what can a property rent for, and then you apply a cap rate to that, essentially turn income into value, or you look at what, uh, what does it cost to replace it? What's the land worth? What, it, what does it cost to build it? Those are kind of the three fundamental approaches to value, and it's the same for residential as it is for commercial. Um, it's just a matter of scale, essentially, and with residential, Generally, there's going to be more data available, and it is going to be more reliant on the sales approach, just comps, um, whereas in the commercial world, sales are a little bit fewer and far between, and um, figuring out what those comps are can be a challenge. Um, I would imagine, too, but yeah, that's, that's got to be the biggest challenge because there may not be you know, a Circle K that has sold within a 10-mile radius that's the same you know, because the, you know they have different traffic going by, different amount of, of revenue coming in. So you, I, I, you know, there's got to be a ton of different variables that go into a commercial appraisal. There are. There's a lot of different variables, and if you look at a residential appraisal, I mean, it might it's it might be a, you know this thick. A commercial appraisal is going to be about a hundred pages. Let me ask you this: one of the biggest uh, delays in a residential transaction is you know, waiting for the appraisal to come in. And sometimes it takes a couple extra days for the appraisal to come in. In order to put together a commercial appraisal of this thick, I mean, how long does that typically take per file? Uh, generally, our turnaround time is, is 10 to 15 business days. 
and that's kind of standard. So you Residential, you guys have some <laughs> yeah. work to do. Pick up the This guy's making slide. a Bible, and you guys have it like this big, like, I don't know. Yeah, you have 30 uh, comps to work off of. And it they turn off my internet all winter. And <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in defense of the residential guys, though, I mean, they can do an appraisal in a day. Sometimes they can do two in a day. Uh, it, it's, it might take us three days. It might take two weeks to do one appraisal. So, um, what, what was the what was the highest value? What was the, like the biggest file that came across your desk? Was it like an entire shopping center for like thirty million or um, some of those? Um, a, bi a big apartment properties, multifamily. Yeah, those probably are the highest, close to hundred million. That's how, wild. how how many. How many units are in there? Do you, you know, like, wait, like to get up to that level, like 300, 300. So do you, are you having, how do you break all that down? Do you, I mean, do you have to address every unit? No. So if I'm appraising a big property like that, you'll, I'll look at a, a sampling of units. That's something else. Yeah. So I don't have to look at each, each okay. and every every unit there holy so, smokes like for residential i know some they have to go out there and they have to walk the property and measure it. are you doing the same thing too out in the field like doing measurements of the building or you just kind of go off of what's on it, public record it, well yeah it kind of depends um, on the property and the client some clients have requirements that we would measure it but if it's uh, you know like a big multifamily property we're not going to be measuring that, so we'll look at a survey. <laughs> Measure each or bathroom. Other other third party sources. Yeah. To, what, yeah. What's the scale and price for the cost of an appraisal? Which oh yeah, because a residential is anywhere from you know six hundred to eight hundred, nine hundred bucks. Of course, yeah, where they make it up and go, oh my god, it's in uh, yeah, I have I'm, to go on buy a new rush, car. Yeah, twelve thousand. Yeah. But um, yeah, what do you, what is the? Um, I think in in general. Um, Generally speaking, you're probably looking at 2,500 to 3,500. Wow, that's so crazy! But right? it's going to be a wide mm -hmm. spectrum. No, of course, depending yeah. on the property, the size, and the scope of work. But I used to do a little bit of com uh, commercial lending, and that's not too far off from where it was before. So I would I imagine one of the few things that didn't get a big hike. And do you, you, you remember, like, can you speak to that? Right? Don't you agree? Like, I don't think it's gone up like they've they've done everything else. Well, you're right. I mean, if I go back to my the start of my career. 16 years ago, they were still, like I would look at old reports and you would see that appraisers had actually used real film to take photos, had to go oh, wow. get the film printed. And then, like, and they glue would, stick it on the gl Glue stick it in, all those kinds of things. So while the fees mm -hmm. haven't changed all that much, we, we've gained a lot of efficiencies. Streamlined processes. And exactly. That works out great. You know, and sometimes I, I think anytime you have some inflation factors or whatever, there's this benchmark and once it reaches there and go, oh, well, cost went down, I'm like too bad, you guys already agreed to pay for this. So it's <laughs> kind of cool that it kind of leveled like this and, and it remained the same. And, and um, you know, c again, consumers and everyone else just always ends up getting the, the shaft when it comes to that. But I'm kind of good that you guys didn't actually hike it up and say, oh, they'll never know. Yeah, pretty yeah, honest good, of you guys. Good for the consumer. I mean, it's all supply <laughs> yeah. and demand, but yeah, yeah, exactly. So I got to imagine too. I mean, with residential, there's AI models, whether it's a, you know a Zillow, Zestimate, or something like that. That you know our MLS can give you a ballpark. Like here's the price that it's probably 300 to 350. So I would imagine there's something similar in in commercial where you can you know put in the address and it'll kind of give you an AI model of what the value should be in a range. I think that's that's probably coming. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's not quite here yet, but um, I wouldn't anticipate it to be accurate. So. <laughs> what if, don't, don't rely on that. Yeah, <laughs> There's got to be a Zillow for commercial coming out. Uh, patent pending, dude. Let's. I'll work on it with my AI models. I mean, not, I, I mean again, you would have this loose thing, but you could at least see what was out there, right? Can you do that commercial? Can you do I don't know. That's what he's saying. Yeah. In terms of valuation? I oh, no. I just mean period. Like shopping. Like, you know, oh, oh, yeah. there's a component for that. Like on too. LoopNet. Like you could go on uh, and go give you, you an can estimate. Go, yeah, LoopNet. Um, Crexy is a big one right now. Okay. So they, they probably are waiting on someone to take that on, right? Because it sounds like a pretty, I wouldn't say a liability, but what an undertaking to go, hey, so what do you think this commercial building, right? It's like, man. Okay, here we go. But it'd be kind of cool to, for that to be somewhat of a gist so people could sort through it and be like, hey, because Zillow's not that far off. No, I but, mean, it's a ballpark. But the other thing is there's obviously way more factors, but it would be kind of cool if you guys had this, you know, not you guys, if there was a range involved that I don't know who would want to take that on. I think people are working on it, but... 
Let me ask you this though, has there ever been a project that's come across your desk or you've been in a conversation with a, a property owner and they go, you know, what do you, what do you think the value is? And you go, fuck dude, I have no idea. This is the most unique problem. <laughs> Give me like 30 yeah, days yeah. to get back. I have no freaking idea. Got this old church that someone yeah. designed while they're on LSD. I don't know what, I don't know who we could sell this to yet. Yeah, that, I mean, that happens quite a bit actually. And, and I think that that's probably a common misconception of the appraisal industry is that the appraiser shows up and looks at the property and then is going to be able to say, oh yeah, it's worth. Yep, yep, it's there she is. Yeah. 10 Stained million. glass, yeah, okay, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> but really the, the process of an appraisal is, look at, looking at the property is just a small piece of yep. what the appraisal process is. Looking at it is just getting a feel for what's the quality, what's the condition, what's the layout. But the real work happens back at the office, looking, doing the research, pulling the comps, talking to brokers, talking to developers, property owners, getting the full story right. of the property and the market. And then, and then what the appraiser does is not we don't say what the value is. We provide our opinion of what the value is, reflecting what the market is saying the value Disclosure. is. Disclosure. I love that. Yeah. Look at Nobody there can you sue you today. <laughs> what, so what, what do you think, what's the trend now? Obviously, we saw COVID do a, have a lot of uh, impact and, and, and dynamics behind a, the, the business workplace and people's home becoming the workplace. What are you seeing currently now with uh, buildings? Yeah, commercials. I mean, commercial space. It's, um, so it's kind of a, a tale of, of property types, um, better quality properties, uh, better um, condition, properties in better condition seem to be doing pretty well actually. And <clears throat> properties that have maybe some, they're older, functional obsolescence in an area of town that aren't too yeah. desirable. Like the Waffle House, is that what you're Those saying? Are, yeah. <laughs> I, I was thinking about opening up a 16 suite in the old Pizza Hut off of uh, Carlisle. <laughs> yeah. Is that gonna fly? Uh, but no, but what, what do you, those old but buildings, what's happening with them? The office spaces, yeah. Well, a lot of times uh, what's happening is if, if the building is vacant, so picture the, the office towers there at Central and San Mateo. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was just gonna ask week. you about that, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, old vacant office buildings, um, just functionally obsolete issues we've, we just mentioned, those are probably going to be converted into uh, apartments. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that's where it's leaning? I, for me, we talked about this show, this is pure speculation, but I thought, what, in a lack of inventory, what better things to convert into something, and it would take some city planning and stuff, and we know how that can go, but, but what better places where they put in big gyms or they put in places to live, that space has always been occupied and considered like can't do residential. That opens up a full gamut of, 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 of options, right? So is that something that you're seeing? Is there, is there more stuff like that in the works? You don't have to give up any bit. There is, yeah. There's, there's a couple projects that are in the works that I know of. Um, the problem, the reason you're not going to see a, a ton of it, like across the board, is because if the building still has some occupancy, oh, yeah. you know, you're kind of tied to the tenants that are there, and a lot of these buildings just aren't really suited to be residential. Well, you got to yeah, you got to retrofit the elevators, the fire escapes, the smoke the bathrooms, alarms, everything. The, yeah. Sometimes the ceiling heights are too low. Okay, we do we we think it's some mixed use stuff. Maybe. I would think, wouldn't it be easier to, to have a, 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 a finite space to address rather than going, oh my God, this whole thing's going to be a nightmare. You can't really cut a building up into half residential on this floor and then... No, no, you know, no, but on. like, you know, at least segment it somewhat, right? Yeah, I mean, you could do like ground floor, commercial, upper story, office, uh, I mean, multifamily, but um, again, the the floor plates of a lot of these buildings don't really aren't really conducive to that okay what do you think will happen with some of these then i mean if they just if there's no want like what what do you think the future is in some of these buildings i think we might see some be just totally redeveloped yeah. um and i think some developers are seeing an opportunity in some of these buildings of maybe i can buy them cheap and um and figure figure something out you know down the road well here's one of the cool things about your industry and especially your position is i feel like you probably get to know some cool projects that are coming down the pike uh, you know months or years before the city or before the news breaks that hey we're redeveloping this into a new uh, you know multifamily 
So I bet that's pretty cool. You see some projects. Oh, I thought you were going to ask, can we, can we? Yeah, but I mean, is there anything, anything that you're allowed to? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> any, any news you want to break here about a <laughs> new airport going in? Probably not that I could speak to, but, but it is something that attracted me to the industry and is uh, something that's interesting and being, seeing a project that you see the, the plans and then you see it actually come to fruition. Yeah. That's pretty rewarding. And if you want to send an anonymous email, <laughs> yeah. I won't, I yeah, won't be mad. We need some mad. insider trading tips here. Uh, talk a little bit about the Rio Grande chapter of Appraisal Institute. You're the president of it. Talk about how did you get into that, the, becoming the president, sir? Uh, <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's one of those things where we have, we have 80 members. Um, I, I've been in the business for quite some time. and. Um, it was just kind of time to, I wanted to get more involved in my, in my industry, kind of give back. And it may not surprise you, but the, the average age of an appraiser is, is, is up there. And 781 we, years yeah. old is what I've seen. Yeah, they're still it's, using glue sticks. It's basically like that Ron Bell photo <laughs> you showed there. Just talked with the rotary dial, just, oh, hello, it's Robert breaking up here, my landline. Yeah. So we need to bring some new appraisers into the industry, so kind of trying to bring about some more uh, awareness. And, and also something that you guys would be interested in is if you go, one of the questions I get a lot is how do I find a good appraiser? Well, you can go to the Appraisal Institute website and they have a link where you can click find an appraiser and you can search by your zip code address and it'll pull up appraisers. That's one area. question I always get in, in residential is, can you tell me a good appraiser? And I always go, fuck, no, I can't. Well, I mean, I, I've got three I can give you. One yeah. might call you back. It's hard there. The, well, the, the, the one thing you may have selling, you may need to revamp maybe some of the marketing for appraisals, but, you know, we could do something like, you know, you guys need an adrenaline shot. Would you guys, do you guys love adrenaline? You, are you adrenaline junkies? Appraisals may be for you. You like have spreadsheets? A, yeah, I used to jump out of a plane, but now I've been in appraisals for seven years deep, and I haven't looked back. <laughs> uh, no, that's wild. Well, it's always good to get some insight on, you know, from the commercial perspective, because I think that, you know, Albuquerque, and much like every city in, in the country right now, is going through a little bit of a renaissance when it comes to office buildings, and, you know, real estate works in such cycles that, you know, values are up, and, you know, warehousing's hot this year, and next year it'll be, you know, retail, so, you know, especially during the downturn in 2008, when pretty much everything was closed, um, you know, it's good to see Good to see it cycling it's back Good through. to see the old Navy not on fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, and I think too, you know, w when we talk about the central corridor and in, even into downtown, it, it's always nice to see redevelopment because we were talking about you're, you're, you're in Four Hills, which is one of the most desirable neighborhoods in, in Albuquerque, right there in the foothills, great amenities. And you get just outside of that and you're on central and it's, you know, the zombie apocalypse. Mm -hmm. And we talk about, you know, the commercial space is closing and it's got to wreak havoc on, on values there for commercial as well. It makes it tough. I mean, it's, it's one of those cycles you're talking about with the, you know, you're going to have, have the up cycle, the down cycle. Clearly that area is in a down cycle, but real estate has a way of, of being resilient and developers have a way of kind of figuring some things out. But, um, Currently, yeah, definitely there's some challenges in yeah. certain pockets of the city. Unha uninhabited buildings are, are very, um, they're, they're bad. They're bad for that part of the city. You mm -hmm. always want the places occupied, and when they're not, they get, you know. Um, oh, they will, get they will get occupied quickly. Yeah, not so that's, the right they, way. It, can be, it can be a very, um, it could be a, 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 a could be the word, a culprit for maybe a downturn in some sections of the city. So the culprit, yeah. So it'd be a. I don't know. I, don't you see, like, you know, you don't want abandoned buildings, right? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, no, no absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, that's some good insight, Carl. I appreciate you coming on the show and kind of just dropping some knowledge from your perspective. Um, let me ask you this, though. What is dealing with, do you deal a lot with commercial brokers then? Mm -hmm. So what are some of the, like, when you're, when you're in taking a file or you're meeting with a client for the first time, I mean, what are the, like the, the first three things that you have to ask them about the property? I mean, I would I imagine it's got to be rents. Uh, or is it banks asking you, right? The banks and, and client, right? Well, so yeah, banks are the ones that us will usually be hiring me. Okay. Um, but then I'm either given the contacts of a broker or the property owner. And if it's an income producing property, yeah, I want the rent roll. I want the historical operating statements. 
Um, if the property is, is under contract for sale, I want to know how long it's been marketed for sale, how many offers were, were received, why, why is the buyer buying the property, like what attracted them to it, why, why is the seller selling? The appraisers want to understand all those different things and yeah why is this guy unloading 17 subway franchises <laughs> yeah. what are we <laughs> what are we not need doing to know? well <laughs> but i think that's one of the that is kind of the one of the exciting things about about the industry i mean it can be looked at as oh it's just you know boring numbers spreadsheets putting reports together but we do kind of get to have that behind the scenes look of real estate and how it works and get to go and tour some of these properties and see how the businesses yeah. using them work or in the residential side, go and see a bunch of different houses. And we need to pick and prod his brain more often. I, yeah, hey, it, it's us again. <laughs> you know, I saw that I sat in my truck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because we always, you know, it's, it's in the appraiser in the residential space is always the man behind the curtain, right? Nobody speaks to the wizard. You can't talk to the appraiser. You can't sway it. Is it any different in, in commercial where, you know, you get the, the broker calling you, hey, dude, I need to get an extra $2 a square foot here. What do you got for me? Yeah, it's, um, it's not as regimented as the residential side. Uh, I can definitely talk with the brokers and the, the property owners and um, get all the things I need and questions answered. It's more of a firewall between me and, say, the mortgage lender. Uh, that's kind of where that separation is more on the commercial side. Uh, but I do understand on the residential side that, yeah, it's well, Yeah, and I think, too, when you're, you know, appraising a $300,000 home on the west side versus, a, you know, $600 million multifamily project, you need to have an open dialogue with brokers and, and really understand the full picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, uh, it, but I would argue too on the residential side, I think that's a missing component that would be important for them to fully understand the story because it does speak to, it can speak to market value because if the appraiser doesn't get to interview the property owner and finds out that they're under some sort of compulsion or highly motivated to a sell, fire sale, yeah. you know, that, that can then speak to the, the analysis and in uh, and truly understanding that yes, that sale price is probably below market value. Yeah, that speaks to transparency. Well, we have to, we're a little bit over our segment, but I have to say he's the second appraiser I've ever liked. I think they're, <laughs> things are moving up. Thank you for coming on the show. I actually didn't hate him. I was ready to just. <laughs> no, Connor, we appreciate it. We'll have uh, links to all your contact information in case anybody want, needs to hire an appraiser. And yeah, we appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much for coming we on. We learned Thanks for a lot. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> coming up next, here's why you're going to want to stay tuned. It's everybody's favorite, Skip's Tips. This. Oh. Oh, yeah. Is UABQ. That was a good segment. We're on to segment three, part of our favorite portion of the show. So much learning, so much earning, so much butter churning. Skips tips. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get ready to churn some butter. butter. Skips tips. Anything that saves us time, makes us more money, or allows us to have more fun in real estate or real life. All right, let's get into this. Congratulations, you saved enough for a down payment on a new house. But did you budget for closing costs, moving costs, repair costs, property taxes, HOA dues, homeowners insurance? Here's where I'm going with this. Uh, the good news is you can buy a home with as little as 3.5% down, which in Albuquerque is about ten dollars to $15,000. But did you know, to cover the additional costs associated with your transaction, you can expect to budget another 5 to 10%. Hold on. You can expect to budget another five to $10,000 in ancillary costs associated with your transaction. This is important to make sure that you have this money up front because it's an additional cost that you will incur when you're purchasing your new home. It's not just about the down payment. That's one way you can make sure you have all of your bases covered. Sticker shock? Yeah. What's been your experience when buying or selling a home? Share this with a friend and tell him Skip said so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was so a... tippy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I would say one thing I want to add to your, uh, your part, Skip, was um, every once in a while, lenders 
can add a credit. So let's say that you felt like you didn't have enough money for closing costs, were a little bit short. Um, a lender is allowed to actually bump up your interest rate if they do what's called a change of circumstance to explain that, hey, bump up my rate a little bit because I need some more lender credit. So there's a few ways to, to bridge the gap. Um, and, and, and there's also some um, seller credits that can happen, but you know, he's right. There's also a 3% down loan for Fannie Mae. Oh, how would we find out more information about that? Oh, Grant? well, glad you asked. <laughs> Grant Harvey, Vision Mortgage Home Loan Expert. Uh, every Wednesday night, Sunday morning on the Education Channel, and then every day of the week on Channel 27, 24 7 on YouTube. <laughs> we have a 20, yeah, we have a 24 7 <laughs> channel. Uh, I want to invite you to stay tuned for the Ron Bell episode. It's coming up. A little teaser for you, and that's about it. Stay tuned. This is all about you, Bell. ABQ.